Hi, my name is Jen Temple, and I am a professor in the Departments of Exercise and Nutrition Sciences and Community Health and Health Behavior at the University of Buffalo. I'm also the director of the Nutrition and Health Research Lab, and the work that we do in the Nutrition and Health Research Lab is really centered on understanding factors that influence food choice and eating behavior. And the recent work that we've been doing has really focused on lower income populations and trying to understand factors that influence their food decision making, such as neighborhood food environment, home food environment, and food insecurity. So I think the topic of nutrition and eating was chosen for Public Health Week because Food and nutrition and eating are really the foundations of good health. And when people make poor eating decisions or don't have access to healthy food, it contributes to chronic disease and also exacerbates health disparities. And so eating and, and equitable access to healthy food should really be the cornerstone of public health practice and of public policy in order to ensure that people have the ability to live their healthiest lives. One thing that I want people to understand about food choice and eating is that it's really complicated. And there's a number of different factors that can influence the choices that people make about food and how much they eat, and that these factors can change across the lifespan. So one of my recently graduated PhD students, Amanda Ziegler, really focused on this for her dissertation work. She was trying to understand the decision making that adolescents are making when they're choosing their food. And one of the things that she found out was that there's a lot of different reasons that adolescents make food decisions. And so things like ease of preparation, um, preference, healthfulness, availability, time that it takes in their schedule, how hungry they are, uh, things like that are, are all kind of influencing one another and influencing the food choice that adolescents are making. And when we think about families, it can be even more complex because families and parents, they're thinking about what they have access to, what they have time to prepare, what they have the knowledge to prepare for their families. They also might be thinking about what their kids will actually eat. So we hear from parents all the time that like, well, I have one picky eater and one kid that'll eat anything. And all of these competing factors can really make it really stressful. For, um, for families to figure out what to prepare for their kids for meals. One of the other things that I would like people to know is really, it's very harmful to judge people. So one of the things we hear from lower income families all the time is that they feel very judged. Like if, for example, if they were taking their kids to McDonald's for dinner, you, they might get some looks from people or um, people might um, pass judgment on them for making their choice. But for a family that might have a limited amount of time, a limited amount of, mon a limited amount of money, kids who are hungry um, and, and want food kind of right then and there, um, McDonald's might be the best choice for that family at that time. And it might be a way that can alleviate some stress that a family has about feeding their kids. And so it's really harmful when we judge people for these food decisions that they're making, also for their, for their body weight um, and, and you know, where they're eating and how they're eating and how they're feeding their families. And so I would urge everyone to have, have more compassion for people um, in these situations. In terms of what people can do to get involved with this issue, I think it's really important that we do everything that we can to improve access to healthy food for people in all communities. So in the Buffalo area, there are community gardens that people can help with and maybe starting a community garden. We also have a mobile market program that is headed by Dr. Lucia Leone. So getting involved with that, maybe helping to get the word out about that or get involved and volunteer with some of that mobile market delivery, um, that could be helpful. And then I think just again, as I mentioned earlier, having more compassion for people um, that are living in, in lower income situations and maybe not passing judgment on the food choices they're making or their body weight, even that alone, trying to reduce stigma about weight and about people's food choices, that alone can help um, at least address some of the um, mental health burden that some of these things can bring on families.